What's up, one by oneers? <laughs> I don't know. I've been hearing like a lot of people that have podcasts. They like call the people. Um, they have a, like a name for the people that listen to the podcast. You know, the friends of the podcast. Um, I don't know. Off the top of my head, right now, I'm just thinking of the latest one I listened to. Uh, let there be talk with Dean Del Rey and uh he called like they are called the the Del Razors. That's fucking awesome. Um he's got an awesome podcast if you ever want to fucking check that out too, man. He talks to a lot of music people over on the West Coast right now. I mean he goes all over, but um you know. He's a funny dude too. He used to be a rocker and now he's a fucking comedian. And and that's what's up got to check that kind of shit out because rock and roll and comedy go hand in hand because you know a lot of people that play music want to be comedians and a lot of comedians want to be rock stars and they're all friends usually (laughs) or so i've heard but on with the show this week i have i don't know if i want to say this week because like and recorded like two or three um, podcasts in one week, and I, I feel like I want to spread them out, but I want to, I want to release them, I want to release the demons. But um, this week, we'll just say this week. This pod, this episode. It's a, a dude that I met at an open mic over in Marlton on Route seventy three in New Jersey. It's at a place called Scatoros. It's a very cool open mic. They got a lot of awesome players up there. Um, he came up and did a bunch of Beatles songs. And, uh, you know, we talked from there. I met him doing sound for Bob Bowling for Shut Up Justice. He's playing guitar with them now. And, uh, you know, he's a cool dude. And he's really into music. And I really dig that shit. He's 19. But, you know, who wasn't 19 at one point? I remember when I was 19... And I was like, I don't know if I was in the uh, metal band at that time. I think I might have been in my, like, no band phase there for a few years. I'm not sure. I forget. But I remember not being able to go to the bars. Back then, You, I don't even remember them being letting people in that weren't 21, you know, that were in bands. Because I tried. I thought. Maybe it happened a few times. I don't know. My memory... Ah, my memory. Dory. Dory the Explorer. But, um, yeah. It's a fun episode. So check it the hell out. Even if you're underage. Because music is for all. And this dude is all about music. So please welcome Mr. Brendan Morrow. Recording here. Cool. Are you there? Hello, how you doing? How you doing? I'm doing good. We're here wow. with Brendan Morrow. That's me. It's a little little guitar player guy I met at Scatoros. Yeah, I am the little guitar player guy you met at Scatoros. As as I thought in my head just now, I don't know why the fuck I just <laughs> like that. <laughs> <laughs> No, Doesn't matter. It's all good. All no, good. we met um probably like a month or two ago at Scatoros. I remember pretty distinctly because I was sitting there with my girlfriend at the, the table, like across from you, and you were like on the edge there on the line, and you had this girl with like crazy color hair or something, or like tattoo. I don't know. I forget. Like something very colorful. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. But you got up and played some Beatles songs. And it was badass. It was good. Yeah, yeah. You've been play. doing that a long time, or a I, while. You've been doing like yeah. the Beatles stuff. Yeah, I play in. I play multiple Beatles tributes. Kind of a gypsy player. Whoever wants me to play for them, I'll play for them, and they give me money. It's kind of stuff like that. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, but I've just been a Beatles freak since I was like little. Yeah. So was that like the first fun. shit that you got into? That you were like 
introduced to. Like, because we're sitting here in your dad's studio in the basement, and it's fucking cool as hell. Yeah, I, I want to hear uh, some of your dad's music and talk to him. Yeah, the old man. <laughs> my my dad's awesome. He got me into it, and he's a Beatles freak as well. If you can't tell from all yeah. the Beatles stuff on the memorabilia. Wall. Yeah, he he's a Beatles fanatic as well. Um, so he never really pushed it on me. Um, I think yeah. I think by the time I was of age to like comprehend music, because when you're four or like three it's just you know noises that sound cool and so yeah. pretty sure like who let the dogs out was that number one at that point mm-hmm. um but beetle <laughs> beetles one came out which is a collection of all their greatest hits or like just their number one hits I yeah think. yeah I remember. and they would just play commercials of that constantly with the green S- apple on it right uh no it's, just no. The, it's the big red the, one okay yeah, yeah and they would just play that constantly and from that i just i, I knew all the songs you know, I just and then my dad heard me singing them. You know, his <laughs> little five year olds walking around singing "Come Together" or something. And just you know, eyebrow raised, looks over, and I remember it distinctively. He took me in the studio and said, "I'm going to show you the Beatles," and he put on Sgt. Pepper. Really? And from that moment on, just the first, the first, the first song of Sgt. Pepper is one of my favorite Beatles songs of all time, just because that is the first album the first song i remember just being introduced to and just being like whoa and you look at the album cover and you're like five so it's all cool colors and you're just like, what is this this is awesome i need this in my life yeah <laughs> besides the fruit loops give me some of this shit man <laughs> yeah i don't know i mean i like other shit besides fruit loops oreos double stuff oreos mm. that that was that was the go-to snack oh my god yeah remember the dip the dipping ones like they had some kind of like yeah there's like there's like a little my babysitter would bring those to the house and i love her eternally for bringing those to the (laughs) house they were were just yeah these little like (laughs) the night the late 90s were awesome like just the little food like i loved being a kid in that time it was awesome yeah so after you started listening to the beatles that's when you like that you were real young so you didn't really start playing guitar or anything back at that time right or did you pick something up i i picked up I wanted to play bass. I wanted to be like McCartney, and then The Who came around. Because uh. my dad was like, why do you want to be a bassist? And then I saw Townsend just destroying everything, blowing mm-hmm. stuff up. I was like, that looks so much cooler than bass. You know, even though The Who has Ent Whistle. But mm-hmm. I just thought Townsend was so cool, and I wanted to play guitar. And yeah. I just started, I learned like three chords, like everyone does, at like five. And then I kind of sat on those three chords till yeah. it was eight and then, <laughs> you know like and that's enough chords, that's enough to yeah. comprehend uh, power chords didn't come along till later but i was more into like just i wanted to play beatles yeah you know so if i could just strum along and play beatles stuff it was cool that's awesome man. <laughs> yeah you know and because i lived in a shadier part of collings lakes mm-hmm. you know, I know where, yeah that's not exactly where you want your kid running around and stuff so i kind of just stayed in the house and just it's listened just... to music and just when along. did you actually start jamming on, get on the bass? Did you did you pick up the bass first? Uh, no. That was the thing. When you picked up, I don't know if it was the first time that you you performed in front of me, but you, you picked up the fucking guitar or whatever, you played a Beatles song, and then you picked up the bass left-handed. Yeah, well, that's... You just, lived, <laughs> like, you, you just learned that apparently last year. Well, yeah, what it is, because I, I got into a Beatles tribute, and I, I saw like an ad on Craigslist. Craigslist has it all. Yeah. And it was Paul needed for Beatles tribute, and they didn't seem to have their stuff together based off their Craigslist post. So I was like, why not? I just got a, like some grindcore band or something, you know, just playing mm-hmm. metal. And I did Paul at Skateros. I played a show as Paul at Skateros, oh, yeah? right-handed. And Billy Delight from Skateros actually came up to me and said, "You're doing it the wrong way." Mm-hmm. So, so my goal, <laughs> I was like, I was like, all right, I see where we're going here, because I was I wasn't that serious into it. And um, he told me about a guy named Graham Alexander, who's one of the best McCartney look-alike, sound-alike guys ever, and he lives in Haddonfield. You know, it's like 20 wow, minutes away. Really? So I hooked up with him, and we just started talking. I was like, look, is it really that hard to learn left-handed? And he's like, no. So I just I had, I had a Hoffner right-handed. I flipped the strings and just sat in my basement for a week and just – just duked it out. To just, to just, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> and um, hammer-ons were always the hardest. They're hard oh, and yeah. 
got that down. Any like anything at first, man. Like I, I tried to turn a guitar around, and even though it's upside down and like the strings are strumming sucked. Strumming, yeah. strumming was Hard. awful. And then, um, the direction you're going in. If you're ascending, for some reason you want to descend left-handed now because your brain is used to going towards right. If <laughs> yeah. you're ascending on a note playing right-handed guitar, but you're now, like, hey, you, you got to still strum yeah, down there. <laughs> yeah, now it's like you got to. Cu- it's it's crazy. It's it's it, it was a pain, but now it's just it's like nothing. It's pretty fun. That's awesome. Now you've uh you recently started jamming with Shut Up Justice, their cover band in New Jersey. Yes, I have. I like that so far. I I uh, love the guys in Shut Up Justice. They're cool it's dudes. Cool time. I've done They're, sound for them too. You've been, yeah, I've I've been there when you've done yes. that. It's <laughs> um, crazy. It's Shut funny. Up Justice is awesome. They're great people. Mm-hmm. Um, John Kretz, who's getting old and wants to leave. He's <laughs> you old geezer. <laughs> you you old geezer. Out. Wherever you are, Kretzu. Uh, Much love to Kretzu. We but, might listen to it. He might listen to me. Maybe. If he does, there it is. And if he does, you got some beef. See, that's because he ne- <laughs> he could never get my name right. He would always call me Brandon when it's Brendan. I said no, it right in the beginning. You did. That's all that matters. Don't I say it again. I did my homework, actually. <laughs> you know, it's just, it's for some reason one of those names. So my stage name is actually Francisco Corleone. <laughs> if anyone from Shut Up Justice is asking, that is that is the name I go by while playing with Shut Up Justice. I'm one of those guys Francisco that has alias. Francisco Corleone. Yeah. He called me Francisco, and I just like, well, I need a cool last name, so I took the Godfather name, threw it on there. So, hey. Fuck it, man. That's you, my like, persona. <laughs> you're, you're slinging riffs, you know? Yeah. Instead of bullets. <laughs> 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 Bitches better watch out. <laughs> and it's crazy because you, you met them, I think, at Skatoras, right? Um, um, I think because they, I don't know, maybe, maybe you did or not, but I was up there like one of the weeks after I met you, and I saw them uh, jamming at the open mic, and I thought maybe you did. They were jamming with Frank. They yeah, had Frank he, Morley he playing guitar him. with yeah, them. He, he came up, and there. I saw them, and I thought they were good. They played, they played like a Black Key song and a Kings of Leon song, mm-hmm. and they did it really well. And I was like, they were one of the better acts of that night, and I thought they were good. And then I sent Frank, um. Facebook messages anyone looking for a guitar player because I just want to get out and play and get my name out there a bit and he hooked me up with the guys from Shut Up Justice and um, we started talking you know they knew I was interested and then John did something to his shoulder messed his shoulder up and couldn't play a full show yeah that weekend and I found that out on Wednesday and that's the weekend that I did sound yeah and, yeah, and, and ended up playing half the show friday you yeah. know you i had to learn like 30 songs or something right yeah I, like I the learned, day or two before i learned a solid chunk of it but um that's awesome and then i also played the next to day that shit that's what's up yeah you know it's it's good. that or delivering pizzas and i don't want to deliver pizzas <sighs> yeah i've you gone know? through that in several incarnations in my life <laughs> there, need, there needs to be a separate podcast the the woes of a pizza delivery boy yeah you know and all the the different things that you do as a pizza boy because i remember driving around pizza boy sounds so dirty when you say it like that. it's not like the movies it's not nothing like yeah, the they movies. don't come in there with a pizza box with a hole in the bottom no like, hey, it's not it's not that pizza? interesting it's usually just some fat <laughs> slob that's upset because you're late with their pizza when the or kitchen dude, was delayed man. Around like this is uh, Williamstown, and I thought you know it was it's a pretty nice area, but like as when I d- delivered a pizza, uh, Pat's, this one dude got like jumped, like really? right behind, um, right behind Pat's. <laughs> actually, well, yeah, that's that's one of the that shadier parts of Williamstown. Actually, yeah. no, uh, where I worked at Tuscan Pizza, yes. great pizza. If you're in if you're in the area, have them. Um, in the township but areola. They, yeah, but they were located right by a trailer park. Mm-hmm. I mean, I delivered to people with no arms. How do you give a man with no arms a pizza? Like you, you just gotta, look. You, you gotta just, go you in just, there and put it just, down. You just hand it straight to him. It's just like I'm not gonna doubt this man. Oh, no. He's fully I've, capable. I've, yeah, I've, uh, I've delivered to like a lot of different places, and some places I had to go in and like put it down for. Like they'll open the door, and I'll have to go in. and put it down on the ki- on the kitchen table and they'll say the money's right there and do you need a tip no okay have a great night i mean because you just you get do? in a you get in a haze of just the man- just going around and around again just delivering pizzas and <laughs> then you, to music. you yeah you pick your head up see my radio also crapped out so Ooh, i had no music what? so I, what you all i had was window? like i had, you had sports wind? radio 
I had sports radio. My CD well, I mean, player that's... broke. Mm. It was awful. It was <laughs> awful. Just listening to a bunch of people complain about the Eagles in the middle of summer. Like, <laughs> when they're not even playing. It's like, it, yeah. Or wait, it's like, is that the uh, preseason? No. No, they're not playing. Know. They're not playing. What the shit? And even when they are playing, it usually doesn't matter. They've never won it. I was upset when 94 went sports. Were you? Like, I I was, only know them one, sports. It was, what? It was only <laughs> one of two or three rock stations in Philly right now. Like, 93.3. Then there was ninety four one, which was YSP, but it's why whatever the hell it is now, but it's like all sports all day. And then like one oh four five. It's like kinda alternative kind of stuff. One oh four five as far as like rock rock and roll music yeah, is concerned. It's ninety three three is like pretty much it now. Well one oh four five is pretty good though. I'll listen to one oh two point nine when and one, yeah, MTK, when they're not yeah, playing yeah, just straight too. like it's like that's There's same, more than I thought. It's but, those same three songs from the seventies that they'll over <sighs> like just the Bachman Turner overdrive I one. Don't know. <laughs> just constantly that's on every time. That's why I love technology these days, dude. <laughs> just being able I was talking about it with a dude, Corey, last night. You just can go and download a band from iTunes and by the time you get out to your car and plug it into your auxiliary input, you can play that shit loud as fuck and Or you could just cool. run up your data and YouTube. And you can have you can that be, too, but you, that's chicken is expensive, <laughs> man, dude. I yeah. did that one summer, and I uh, I wasn't I was paying atten- I wasn't paying attention, and it ended up being like seven hundred dollars. <laughs> oh my god! It grew over time. It grew, but I mean, wow, just Jesus! Just I, was, I felt like an idiot after I whatever. So the Beatles, back to the Beatles. Beatles, you do Paul and George. I just yeah, I do. Heard. Um, I originally wanted to do Paul, and that's what I focus most of my efforts towards because I play left-handed and I do all that. And then I got a call from a local Beatle act that was playing. Um, they were playing the Tall Ships Festival in Philly. They're okay. called the Beat Tells. Beat Beatles. Tells. The Beat Tells. Nice. You know, clever, right? Um, and they had no George. They they didn't have a George. The cool thing with doing a Beatle thing is um, if I play Paul, I know all of Paul's parts. Like, Paul would do them and how it'll be done. So it's essentially interchangeable yeah. if you're good. There's yeah, because you know there's all not Paul's many, vocal parts and bass There's parts not and... many people that are good, though. There's there's thousands and thousands of tribute bands, and there's, like, 15 that are good. Yeah. So, um, but they needed a George, and... I, I told him, you know, just to help him out for future Paul gigs, you know, just, you know, keep me in mind. I'll help you out. I'll, I'll mm-hmm. learn the George parts yeah, for you, you know, <laughs> wink, wink. Um, <laughs> and then and then it paid really well, and I was like, you know what? I'm I'm there, you know, and it, they, they only, they don't go into the psychedelic stuff, so I don't need any of the different costumes. All the costumes up to that point oh, are yeah, matching. You just need, like, the suit kind of yeah. one. Yeah, and my dad has a Gretsch like George's, and I was just like, can I borrow this for the afternoon? Cool, thank you. Went, played. I was expecting to play on like milk crates. Yeah. Awesome stage. Right on yeah. awesome stage. Great sound system. I want to come see one of these. these be- they're you gotta cool. let me know next time they, they have one. Um the beat tells I'll be actually doing George with them again because they liked me for that. And I'm just like, why not? You know? Um, I'll be doing a show with them in Borgata sometime in the next two months. Cool. Don't awesome. know when, but well, next time when you find out, let me know and you can come back on and fucking. All right, talk that's about what we'll again. do. That's it'll sure. just it'll be the Borgata segment. And uh, with the open mic thing too, it's Skatoros. Uh, I wanted to mention them because they're like really good musicians up there. Yeah. Billy Delight. Frank has been telling me, uh, dude, you need to get him on and just talk with him, man. He's an awesome dude. Billy's he seems man. like an awesome dude. I, I friend requested him on Facebook and everything. So Billy's awesome. He's We're he's cool. a cool guy to talk to. Um, Josie and Mike and uh, Carmen. Mike the, is the my favorite band. bassist of all. Any he's really guy, good. My, They're Mike's, all great. He's everything that embodies a bassist, in my opinion. Just mm-hmm. stocky shoulders, just <laughs> great beard. You know, he's even has yeah. the bass cleft in the arm. He's, he looks like he's about to build a deck. Yeah, <laughs> like, not being he's, deck band. he's nah. the man. <laughs> he, he's the man. Nah, they're all great. They're all like no. And then see they Frank do pull you know? that shit off. Yeah, Frank fucking gets up there and like rips it with them too. And the, that's why you got to go see Twenty Three North, man. Him and um, have, did you I, did you meet the you met the drummer Ed? Right? I think we played together. 
Yeah, I jammed it. I think we've we've jammed and or supposed to. You want to start uh, writing some original music with Frank and possibly Ed on drums, maybe. Uh, yeah, maybe. Frank and I are talking uh, about putting together an original project. We can't say anything about it because it's nothing yet. The schedule's yeah, the just words happened. are in the air. You know, that's about it's, it, it's, but... Yeah, that's about it. Um, but I have a bassist and I play guitar and I sing, and then he has drums and. Frank obviously plays guitar, yeah. and the thing is, if I got to front the band, I don't want to play lead. You know, I this can play true. lead, but if I got to sing, I don't want to play lead. I want to just focus on yeah. singing. It's hard enough to play and sing guitar at the same time, like a lot of the time. Yeah. I mean, it's it's hard to do like technical stuff. Yeah, yeah. You know, th- that sucks. I was talking about it, uh, James Hetfield <laughs> last <laughs> night, how he's like badass at like doing some crazy riffs and like having like yeah. Just, just like that cool sync s- melodies over top and shit. It, the guitar players that play lead and front the band, kudos to you. Hell yeah, you know, <laughs> you got to be fucking on point. I've done it in like three pieces and mm-hmm. stuff, and I've tried to do some complex stuff, and it it's I've had cool. Three pieces before, but I've never been like a big lead. It's, it's just the whole. Yeah. It's the patting the head. Yeah, and it's rubbing the th- whatever the hell, rubbing the tummy. <laughs> it's tough, but we're working on getting that together. Whenever, it, whenever the stars align. Cool. It should Hopefully. be soon. That'd be nice. We're looking to just get together and record. Just just, just go it, straight yeah. into it, and then I want to. I've been waiting to hear some like original music from Frank and like the dudes from Twenty Three North because they've been playing, uh, the, like I met them at De- Devlin's open mic, and they they're great. They fucking had like a little original jam that they play. Frank calls it the original song. I think he called it the false sum. It was going to be the name of their band back in the day because they're from Folsom. Um, but they're great at the the cover songs, and I've been waiting to hear, like, some original shit with some vocals and stuff. But they, you know, with 23 North, it's just, like, it's hard to throw them in there when you're a cover band, you know? Yeah, they're 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 awesome. They're an awesome band. I'm surprised I haven't cool seen dudes. them. Probably, um, Frank and I have talked about me going to see him and sitting in on a few songs or something like that. So hopefully that will go cool. down. And hopefully we can get on some originals. Frank, wherever you are, I hope you hear this. Let's get on some originals. Let's get on it. Like, yeah, come on now. <laughs> <laughs> you got the the know-how, so get in on the hen how. I don't even know what the hell I mean. Do you have any other, like, besides the, the Who and the Beatles, like, do you get into any, like, harder rock shit? Guns N' Roses. Guns N' Roses? I'm a Guns N' yeah. Roses fanatic. <laughs> I, got, I got into Guns N' Roses when I had an evolution. I went from the Beatles to the Who to the Eagles, Joe Walsh from the Eagles. Joe Walsh is one of my biggest guitar heroes. Mm-hmm. He's the man. He's really good. Joe they Walsh, got a lot of great songs. Joe Walsh is awesome. Um, and then the solo stuff's great, too. And then that that's what I kind of developed as a lead player. And that came in just the right time. I think I was like eight. It was probably eight. And Slash came along. <laughs> And you know, it, you know, everyone loves Slash, or you know, like especially the wannabe like poser guitarist kids. Yeah. Especially after the video game came out with like Slash, you know, as the main character, like uh, the, the Guitar Hero, the Guitar games. Hero games. Yeah, you know, I I like Slash before Dude, that. What did you think about? Did you ever play those? Yeah. Okay. When they first came out, I was totally against them. I don't know why, because I was like. It's not playing guitar, man. What the hell am I gonna sit here and waste my time doing this for? But then I sat down with my friend and played that shit. It was so addictive. It's all. It was. They were awesome, especially when Rock Band came out. Yes, Rock Band was cool because everybody could sit there and do it with you. I had neighborhood bands. Sounds it would steady. just be yeah. It would just be like people just coming over. Oh, that's a drummer on, on Rock Band, and I know people that actually started bands from playing Rock Band together. No, they were just shit. jamming in their basement on Rock Band. They're like, why don't we actually learn this for real? <laughs> and they went out and did it. <laughs> they went out and bought like real guitars and yeah, s- with strings and stuff. And they're kind of like, good, but <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know, like check back in a few <laughs> years. Yeah, you know, they'll get there. Yeah, they started late, but um, they keep going. They'll get them points. <laughs> no, I'm actually against the video games that teach guitar. I think that's yeah. a cop out. Why? Yeah. I don't know. Just because you didn't that's have it when you were little. <laughs> no, Dude. I I have way too many things to my act. I have access to too many things. YouTube. Yes. YouTube is the greatest guitar teacher of all time. But unfortunately, that's only been around for like the last like five to ten years tops. I owe my life you know? to YouTube. Now everything is on YouTube. You don't even you don't even have to go to college. You can just fucking watch YouTube videos all day. 
Basically. That is honestly a big chunk of how I learned how to do this shit and get it like on iTunes and all that shit. <laughs> yeah. Watching YouTube videos. <laughs> YouTube's awesome. I mean like especially when it comes to guitar gear. You yeah, know, because like I want, I just got a, I just got a new pedal. I think you were showing me. So, that thing's so, awesome. Yeah. So by the time, what is it? The uh, Firehawk Line Six Firehawk. Oh man, that's just a cool it's Firehawk. You know? Firehawk <laughs> Line Six. If you want a sponsor, hit me up. <laughs> yes, no. I have one. I have a Spider Line Six. These things are awesome. Stack. Yeah, but it. It but looks like, beautiful with I knew, all the lights on I knew it. How to work oh my it. god! By by the time I opened the box, I knew what everything did just from watching YouTube. Yes, and also, to, not to mention technology again, has a fucking app that goes with. It. Yeah, <laughs> Frank Morley actually hates that aspect of it, but it's, why? It's I don't know. It's Frank. Uh, <laughs> it's controlled by it's it you can control on it on your phone and uh, to change patches and edit stuff, and that's cool. I like it. When like, a pedal has Bluetooth as well, badass. and plus it has tone matching. Like, you can play a song from your iTunes library. What? And it will, it'll it'll try to match that tone. Of whatever the guitar is that you're yeah. hearing? Yeah. That is ridiculous. It's pretty cool. Because I had, like, the Line 6 that I have came preset with, like, a couple different, like, bigger name bands, like, like Slipknot and, like... Yeah, it'll have that. Stuff it like that, that, but, like... Stuff. You it's can cool. fucking match it from technology. <laughs> technology. It. It's awesome. I fucking love it. Oh my god. It's great. Well, this has been awesome. I uh I thank you very much for having me down here. It's been real. I wanna come back and uh talk again and fucking jam. You got a fucking awesome place down here. Yeah, we'll do it, definitely. Or maybe even talk to your dad. What does he do? Like what does he does he do the music? Does he still uh put music? He's out? a full time musician. He yeah. that's that's his livelihood. Um, he does some video editing. He actually makes like um, paranormal documentaries. No friggin' shit. He, he'll do he'll do some stuff with that. Um, What's his name? Dan Morrow. Dan Morrow. Yeah, he was in a few bands back in the day. Captain Black, which actually Frank has connections to yeah. through Ed Morrow because Ed Morrow's uncle was the original drummer of Captain Black, which we we just found that out like four days ago. Butch. Yeah. No fucking shit. Yeah. Butch. In Strange Brew, too. I'm going to have a George on here from Strange Brew. Wow. Next week. I'll probably have the whole band. And if you guys do get together um, with Frank and everything, I know he's got the recording down over at the uh, Great Room 2, we'll call it. <laughs> <laughs> the Great Room 2. Um, yeah, hopefully time next time we get together, we'll have something to show. Yes. Or at least some type of development. Yeah, man. And do you, I mean, if you wanted to ever too, man, we can do like a little jam. Like if you wanted to play a song right now, we could, uh, we could always stop this and press record and let people hear it. So that's an idea. All right. Cool. All right, man. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, that was Brendan Morrow. Thank you very much for tuning in to the podcast. Um, if you like this shit and you want to keep tuning in, that's cool. Thank you. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. If you want to subscribe to it, you can go on SoundCloud. You can go on iTunes. I'm trying to get on Stitcher ASAP for all you Android people that care to listen and uh yeah it was cool to uh talk to brendan he's a cool dude he's really into fucking music <clears throat> and uh that's the kind of shit that you don't see every day really you have to go look for people like that that are like down for their shit down for their craft and that's what i'm trying to do here on one by one is look for the people that are down on that shit. Sorry for my my abrasive language, but you know. Um, I want to get some uh, photographers and painters and graphic designers and whatever on here. I want to talk to you and see why you decided to do what the fuck you're doing and how you're doing at it right now. You know. Also, on the way out, I was talking to Brendan's dad, Dan Morrow. 
I used to have a paranormal uh, radio show called Dark Harvest Radio, and that is so interesting to me. I fucking love the whole idea of uh, paranormal and all that kind of shit. Gets really deep sometimes, though, so you gotta watch the fuck out. <laughs> but yeah. I, um, I sat and recorded uh, Brendan. He did a little song for me, a little ditty. Um, it's pretty good. It's pretty fucking good, man. You gotta check it out. It's in Drop D, and he'll explain why. He doesn't like your drop D, but I love it, so. Yeah, all right, cool. Good? Good? Good. Yeah. All right. Um, my drop D disclaimer. That's that's in there somewhere. You could just, I don't, that actually, that's not in there. Not in there. All right. This song. this song is in drop D on an acoustic. I usually don't do that because I think it sounds like rubber bands on a tissue box, but I'm doing it just for you on this occasion. Thank you, because I love Drop D. <laughs> Here's to Drop D. Uh, I recorded this song with my bassist, Liam Stark. He's somewhere out there, somewhere over the rainbow. It's called Diana. Sending the cycles never ending. 